All right, mic check, one, two, how are we doing? I think we're probably good on the mic. Uh, let's find out. I will check with you guys in just a second. In the meantime, I was saying, hi, no, you don't get to eat straight out of the bowl. I was saying that we might try to bring custard in for mailbag today. Now, I don't know if this is gonna work, uh, but I thought it would be fun to try. So here we go. These two get, uh, 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 be good. These two get along pretty well in my office. Um, although what usually happens is after a while, little Custard uh, decides that he's in a playful mood and he'll start making play noises. And so she'll run over to see what's going on and then it kind of turns into something more than what Custard wanted and he's not very happy about it. So that's probably exactly what'll happen here. We'll see. Uh, if I have to take him away after a few minutes, then I do. It's just the way it is. So, um, as long as they're both eating, I think they're going to be fine, though. Uh, let's see. Let's make sure you guys can hear me. Good. Okay, you can hear me. Fantastic. Um, and let's see how I look. Not how I look, whether I'm on camera, though. Um, more or less. Oh, that camera is showing a little too much of the uh, litter box and has been for a while now. We're going to fix that real quick. Okay. So, uh, mailbag today. We've got a lot of big boxes, so it may take a little while. And we've got two letters to start with. Uh, but I guess first news, because we always do news. And the news this week is that uh, Little Crank um, uh, took a tumble and had to go to a couple of different doctors to figure out what was going on. It took uh, eight hours at the emergency vet yesterday after seeing Dr. K to get her uh, imaging done and find out that she's got like uh, weak bones apparently on top of everything else she's got going on. And so taking just a little tumble that any other kitten would have been fine with um, left her with uh, not nothing broken, but uh, sort of like, um, I forget the term that they use for it. It's a kind of... Uh, like little fracture that is uh, um, happens specifically to weak bones. So I think of it like like shin splints and except extra. <laughs> so uh, that's that's probably the right way to sort of think about it. So she uh, is upstairs in the bedroom trying to recover from that, and she's doing fine in recovery. You know, we're keeping her on some pain meds and. We're giving her food right there, and uh, she basically is uh, chilling out right now. She ate fine this morning. Um, but the emergency vet also um, sort of you know, made me realize that maybe her poop situation, well, especially because of the, the injury now, it's even harder for her to poop than it was to start with. So I've been a little concerned about that uh, and extra concerned. So we moved her surgery that's supposed to fix that up to the third. Uh, when it was originally going to be the week after, uh, we moved it up a week to the, just this coming week. So that is the news there. Um, and uh, hopefully that will see her like becoming a whole new kitten that's able to poop well. And uh, it's life changing. Uh, fingers crossed. Now, I have to say that, that everybody has warned us that there's a lot of potential uh, problems with having that sort of surgery done. If they can even do it, you know, the surgeon has to has it's, has to kind of explore to figure out, you know, what what to do. Um, so if they even can do the kind of surgery that's normally done for this, uh, it can come with a, a, a lot of potential for um, having a rough time uh, being able to poop, but maybe not being able to stop pooping or uh, not being able to control where they pee so well. Uh, that kind of thing is, is sounds like it's sort of a common complication. So fingers crossed that doesn't turn out to be the case for her, um, but we're just hoping for the best and we'll find out uh, next, this coming week actually. Uh, so I'm really excited for that to happen. Speaking of this coming week, on Tuesday, Cash will be adopted. His adopter is flying in to pick him up, wonderful. And uh, I'm really excited for him and he's gonna have, I think uh, another kitten to play with where he's going. So he'll be able to keep them real busy. I do think that introducing him is going to take a little bit of time because Cash is uh, very wary of new cats and kittens, but he'll come around in time. 
that's too much now, okay? That's too much. I'm going to have to put Custard away because you don't know how to not run up on him from behind, do you? Um, so, uh, yeah, what I was, I was saying is it's going to take a little bit of work to introduce cash, but the one thing that, that Michelle at Dawes told me about the adoption is that the adopter came in with a good plan for, you know, slow introduction, and uh, she thinks it's going to work out just fine. So I do too. I, like I said, Cash is a good boy who likes other cats. He just takes a little while to come around to the idea of them. He can be extremely hissy at first. And uh, hopefully the other cat respects that or, um, you know, they take time to, to sort of do slow introductions. So speaking of slow introductions, rather than let this get out of control, we'll consider that little eating together to have been a good thing. And we'll take Custard back to his office for now. Come on, buddy. Here we go. You guys will still be able to hear me as I'm going. The wireless mic should work that far. So I can keep rambling while we're moving Custard. Um, I'd kind of like to bring Crank down, but at the same time, I don't want her getting, you know, worked up about seeing her mom and like super excited and trying to run around because um, she's having a hard time. And plus, I don't think, uh, honestly, I don't think you guys are going to want to see how she's doing. She, like I said, she's doing fine. She's been on a couple of the close-ups. You can see she's doing fine. She loves to play. She just lays on her back and just grabs at toys and has a good time. Uh, but it could be a little hard to watch her uh, having difficulty if she decides to start try to go somewhere and it's not easy for her to do and uh, it is what it is she's fine you know like I said I think she's gonna be just fine no big deal we've had worse uh, but it is, it is a little much to watch so I guess I decided not to do it I'm here aren't I okay first off a postcard uh, from Japan I don't know if it was sent from Japan the stamp says probably not, but uh, it has an amazing sort of Japanese, I don't think it's watercolor as such, but it's definitely an ink and uh, something, pencil, ink and pencil maybe, because uh, I can see the little lines in it. It's beautiful, I like traditional Japanese art, and it is a cat looking out over some mountains and fields and Mount Fuji in the background. And uh, some birds, it's just, just beautiful with the cat in there. Very appropriate. And on the back it says, whew, it says I need to work out more. <laughs> I'm winded from carrying custard up the stairs. That's not right. I haven't worked out in over a week because of all the stuff that's been going on. And it's, I'm really, it feels bad, man. Uh, all right. Dear Mr. A, I don't know how many times I want to write a postcard, but then life happens. After the last few weeks, you deserve more than one card, but this one must do for now. Greetings from my vacations in Japan with a view of Mount Fuji from Sweet Cherry Flavor. That's a great name, by the way, and uh, thank you so much for sending this. It is wonderful. Um, it's, uh, this is such an international card. It's got the Japanese art. Um, it is actually classic art. It's the guy who painted it, uh, whose name I'm not going to try to butcher for you, um, died in 1858. So, uh, wow, that is seriously um, some old art there. And then uh, it's titled Cat at the Window. How appropriate. And uh, it was actually um, printed by a French company, according to this, in Switzerland. So... <laughs> Uh, that card's got a lot of places. All right, it's beautiful. Um, okay, now, moving right along. Hi, Gadget. I know you're excited for me to start opening all your toys, aren't you? I know you are. I know you are. Okay, we got a letter here, and it says, Dear Mr. A and Dr. DJ, so glad the... Um, rainstorm didn't hit you hard. My daughter lives north of you in Southbury. Her house sits high, so no problems with flooding, but I am in awe of all the damage. Maybe wonder if you have an evacuation plan for all the cats and kittens if an emergency happens. Yeah, we've never like officially practiced an evacuation, but we always make sure that we have enough carriers uh, ready to go and in the basement, so maybe not the best, but what are you going to do? Um, and I think about it sometimes, so I've got a rough idea what I would do. 
Um, hopefully that's good enough and hopefully it'll never come to that. Uh, we usually don't have any trouble with flooding either. We're kind of um, at the bottom of a hill, but there's a ravine and a creek behind us. So the water's got a real clear place to drain. And when it was raining, we had like a literal waterfall coming off the roof of our house in front where I guess one of the gutters is flowing the wrong way. Um, and uh, an actual like second stream going through our yard. Um, <laughs> So it was a little spooky, um, but there was only just the tiniest bit of a leak at the basement door. Um, not even enough to really worry about. I didn't even have to clean it up. Um, and other than that, we were fine inside. So it, was, uh, it went just fine for us. No big deal. But wow, it was like apocalyptic levels of rain. Uh, let's see, you say penned a letter last week, but didn't get it off in time for mailbag, so I threw it out. But someone mentioned Gadget as being a hurricane. When she first met Halloween House, she reminded me of a tornado. First the roof went, and then the whole house fell over. She should be quality control for cat toys. Well, she certainly is during mailbag, too. She loves watching, helping open all the toys and play with them. That Halloween house is already gone um, after we had um, one of Teaspoon's poop incidents, which, by the way, Teaspoon has been um, on, put on a new program by Dr. K, and knock on wood, it, it seems like it's actually working very well for him. So uh, that's uh, maybe things are going to start to resolve for him as far as his pooping goes. Now, the heart thing is still, uh, we just saw his cardiologist, I guess I should have mentioned, and his cardiologist um, did an exam and said, well, you know, his, his uh, sort of the, in, the pressure in that spot that is the, the problem for him is higher than ever, but um, he's also older and he's got a little more room going on there. And so he doesn't think that there's anything that we have to do for him right away. So we pushed it back again. Um, I know I was excited to find out um, if we could do it and see if it would just change things for him. But uh, it's not worth doing as long as he's still got a good quality of life. He's not suffering at all. You know, it's not causing him any issues. Uh, so um, the cardiologist thinks, you know what, we're going to put it off another nine months or a year. We'll recheck him then and see how he's doing unless anything changes in the meantime. So fingers crossed that it won't. Um, where was I? Oh, the Halloween house. So what I was going to say is the last time that he had a big poop incident and I had to clean everything, I put the house on the chair in there to get it out of the way while I had to mop and sweep and, and carpet clean and everything. And uh, I left it on the chair and somebody thought that, thought that was a great target to pee in, which couldn't have been Teaspoon. That's just not, he's not agile like that. It almost had to have been Loganberry. Uh, it seems like a very Loganberry thing to do, but I didn't see it. So who knows? Uh, anyway, it got peed in uh, a lot and it's huge and it just didn't seem like it was worth trying to figure out how to clean it comprehensively so it wouldn't just get peed in right away again. So, so it left already, but we had a lot of fun with it while it was here and we've got other big houses like that. I can always bring out the Christmas house and uh, I was just actually looking at the little pop-up camper. I'd bring it in here right now if she didn't already have so much to play with. It's just sitting right in the front hall. We've got a mesh thing. We've got all kinds of stuff for her. So it's no big deal that she lost that one. But she had fun with it while it was there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, if you had a dog, she would give it a run for the money. <laughs> but alas, that crank has to take all of her energy. I've learned so much from watching you since Charlie. Oh, good times. Um, although at the time I wasn't sure what I was watching, didn't know it was your home. So glad I found you. Wishing well to all from Nico, a reformed stray cat. That's so cute. Uh, excuse the paper. If I went hunting for my stationery, I'd, uh, I'd never get this posted. I like it actually. It's like a torn out of a, um, a spiral notebook, which is something I haven't seen in uh, since high school, probably. So it really makes me nostalgic. I, I like it quite a bit. So no worries there. Uh, P.S. Wednesday night, just watched Gadget's Great Escape. Uh, MacGyver move for sure. She puts all her cards on the table. She just wants a friend. Well, that's true. She does want a friend, but she has a lot of trouble making a friend. Uh, she's just a little too intense. I think we've all known people like that, or maybe some of us have even been people like that. Uh, so I can sympathize with her, but uh, she'll find the right person to be friends with in due time, I think. She just needs somebody who's uh, able to sort of be on her level, I think, or, 
Or optimally, I still think it might be best if she gets adopted with Crank, because, you know, that's just a built-in friend. But I think Crank is going to need, um, we're going to have to make sure that Crank is doing well if she's going to be able to sort of put up with all of this energy, because, uh, you know, if she's, if she's a little extra brittle and this one's a little extra crazy, uh, that doesn't seem like the perfect combination. Uh, of course, I feel like I should point out, because a lot of people were concerned, including me, that, that maybe something about how crazy she is caused the injury to Crank, and that is not the case at all. Um, I did not go back and watch it myself, but DJ did, and uh, she saw that Crank had nothing to do with it. Um, she just, uh, I mean, uh, Gadget had nothing to do with it. Crank just took a tumble off the beanbag chair, like the kind that, that every kitten does a million times here, and it's nothing. Um, but for her, it wasn't quite nothing. So there you go. Anyway, grumpy knife guard. Ouch, that hurt. <laughs> Always grumping. That is a cute uh, a little difference from our usual knife guard. I really like that. Uh, <laughs> that's adorable. I know you've got to help me open this already, don't you? And I thought there was a name on the outside of this that I didn't cover up. No, I'm thinking of a different box. Um, so let's, uh, let's take, oh, I was thinking of the fact that in the return address I recognized the name, but that's not the name that we use on the stream, and I'm not good at putting those things together, so, so we've got a card here, a couple cards, actually, oh, wow, three, oh, we got bonuses, oh, this one's not a card, though, this is Miss Colleen's house at Scenic U.S. Highway 98, Point Clear, Alabama, a grand old late Victorian home, oh, that sounds very cool, huh. That does sound uh, that does sound really cool. Okay, hang on now. Pop-up card, which I totally did not notice as a birthday card. I was too taken in by the strawberries. Oh well, I guess I know who this is for, but we might have to hang on to it for a little while. Uh, with hugs and kisses to Crank and Gadget from the Carrot Palooza Gang. That's the name I recognized. Robin and Thomas, Max, Lily, Minx, and Trixie. So look at that, that's so pretty. I think DJ's gonna wanna see this before it gets ruined too. I don't know why she likes the strawberry motif so much, but she does. Uh, so I think she'll get a kick out of that. I should have guessed it was Carrot Palooza based on the, uh, the carrot uh, tissue paper here and the fact that now I can see a carrot. So we have two, the note and the note continued. So, uh, okay to read on stream. Dear Mr. A, greetings to you and Dr. DJ. So glad to hear that Professor T. Spoo got a good cardiology report. This is my carrot shipment for Gadget and Crank. There are some special additions in it this time, though. There's a training carrot for Crank since she's so tiny, but <laughs> also uh, something else because the whole strawberry bed with Crank in it drama and because she's such a little strawberry shortcake herself, I thought she and her mom need some very special commemorative, commemorative strawberries. I think they should be called Crankenberries. I did a search for catnip strawberries and the cutest ones were on Etsy, of course. The absolute most adorable ones were in Cindy's, uh, Cindy's, Cindy stand? Oh, Cindy's handcrafts. Oh, I got, okay, I got it. Cindy's handcrafts, that makes too much sense. I asked if they could be personalized, but she said she normally didn't personalize the strawberries. When I explained why and who Graduate and Crank are, she wrote back and said she was secretly hoping the berries were for them. Oh my goodness, so she went over to a friend's house to borrow her embroidery machine to create name tags for the berries. She even made them two-sided. So, here's our coordination on the crank and berries, one each for Gadget and Crank's endowments and one for immediate deployment. Wow, oh my goodness, that is so cool. Hang on, we gotta get to that while I'm talking about it. So first off, we got the usual carrots. Uh, this one is for Gadget. I, it's not really for you yet, Gadget. You've got one just in the other room, don't you? Uh, this one is for Crank, of course. She's got to play with everything as it goes anyway. Oh, what? Oh, this is not a strawberry. This must be the strawberry. So let's see. I don't know what that is yet, but it looks very interesting. Gadget might pull it out before we're even ready. These aren't strawberries. These are cheese balls. This guy looks like a grumpy knife guard. <laughs> they should hang out together. Uh, <laughs> cheese balls and a carrot. What is going on in this world? Okay, uh, cheesy poofs. Let's see. Oh, wow, we've got some cute little foods in here. Oh, these are the strawberries. Here they are. Look how cute these are. Uh, so that's Cindy's Handcrafts. C-I-N-D-I-S uh, Handcrafts. And... 
That's so cool that she was willing to work with you and that she's watched Kitten Academy enough to know who these two are. That's just, that's really sweet. So look at these, these are some nice strawberries and she really integrated these tags well. We have one that says gadget on it and look at that, she did do both sides. And I love the strawberries are super detailed with the little pips on them and everything. And then one that says crank, just like that. Very classic, wonderful little strawberries. It's perfect for them. And the crank one's a little bit smaller than the gadget one. Just perfect. And I uh, see we've also got the business card here. It is Cindy's, C-I-N-D-I, apostrophe S, handcrafts. And it's Cindy's handcrafts.etsy. So that should get you to her. That's fantastic. I'm going to tuck these back in here. There we go. All right. Seal that up. Very, very cute. Now, uh, moving along. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. My kitty's got one too, and they went nuts over the catnip. I hope Gadget goes bonkers over it. She is so funny, and I just adore her. It's truly amazing how after so many sads that she and Crank are now producing so many glads. I'm also introducing some gifts that put the spotlight on cash. For him, there's his very own cashmere mouse. Oh, that, that's what, oh, and it's got his name on it. Look how sweet it is. Oh, it's actually cashmere. That's so cute. So, uh, mouse, wait, this can't be it. This says cashmere on it, but this is a cat, isn't it? Uh, did I read that wrong? I don't think I did, actually. So, uh, hang on, hang on. Uh, <laughs> Uh, gray cashmere replica. I see. So there must be a mouse somewhere. Uh, so also a replica of him that I've also found on Etsy by McLeod. Uh, that's M-C-L-E-O-D. Look, I pronounced it McLeod. Uh -huh. uh, McLeod Handcraft Gifts. M-C-L-E-O-D. Handcraft Gifts. So that's who made this one. It looks just like him with heart pajamas and a scarf on. So cute. <laughs> Uh, I don't, well, I guess we'll find the mouse in a second then. There must be a, sec a separate mouse. Um, for his hopefully soon to be adopter, a gray cashmere replica of him that I also found on Etsy by McLeod Handcraft Gifts. She upcycles cashmere sweaters, which is wonderful since cashmere is too lovely to waste. And our cashmere is too sweet and adorable to not be adopted yet. Please give him hugs and kisses from me if you can catch him. Uh, yeah, he's actually gotten, a, I mean, he still wants to run away every time and makes it into a game, but he's gotten super affectionate over just the last few days. I was just saying that on chat. Oh, here's the mouse, too. Look at how cute that is for cashmere. That's an adorable mouse. He's got giant ears, and it's a plaid cashmere sweater with the little pink on here. They set it off with the ears to match. That is some art. Uh, I love the little the pink part there that shows that it was a plaid sweater. It's just Oh, that's so cute. That's that's fantastic. That's not just a mouse. That really is art there. That's somebody who knows what they're putting together. Uh, let's see. Um, so, our cashmere is too sweet and adorable not to be... Okay, I'm really loving Hazel and her precious not-so-tiny tinies. I will send their carrots in a separate shipment so that this one focuses on cash, crank, and gadget. But I can't help admitting how much fun it is watching these roly-poly little hats. And I swear Bonnet started walking shortly after she was born. As for your snacks, I'm only sending things that hopefully won't um, melt on route. Okay. Oh, here's that extra strawberry. I wondered where it was. Perfect. Let's give this to you right now because that was the plan, right? Here, what do you think of this? Oh, nice catch. She pulled, grabbed it right out of the air. Not letting that one get by her. Okay, uh, let's see. Hang on one second here. What is this little feather doing in here? There's just a little feather all by itself. Okay. Hang on now. This must be her starter carrot for a uh, little crank. That's adorable. And then uh, the stuff that wouldn't melt is uh, obviously the cheesy poofs in a carrot because uh, it's on topic. We have just the fun part, waffle cones filled with pumpkin spice white chocolate. So this is, you know, when you order like a waffle cone with chocolate in it and the chocolate, there's like a big, at the bottom of it, after you eat all the ice cream and most of the waffle cone at the bottom, there's usually like just a solid chunk of chocolate stuck in the waffle cone. And someone has made that into a treat. 
This one has pumpkin spice white chocolate in it, so DJ might really like that. I do know that uh, she does like that part of the, the waffle cone, if I recall. She doesn't usually make it to it, though, because she thinks very like a, like a bird, you know, little tiny bits of food. And so normally when she has ice cream, she doesn't get all the way through it, and I end up being the one that has to finish it. Uh, it also happens with cake, and uh, it's been a while, though, so uh, I've, been, I've been good. Uh, where was I? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Uh, let's see, I will confess that I got the cheese balls be only because they are in a carrot-shaped package. Yes, of course, that crazy face on there really triggered me too. I think that's also what caused me to spass out on the knife guard. Yeah, I see the similarity there. They really go together. I think the knife guard is so cute. Thank you again for all you and DJ do to give mom cats and their kittens wonderful forever homes and for everything you do to make this such a fun, kind, and loving KA community. Love you guys. From Robin, a.k.a. Carrot Palooza. P.S. Um, Mayhaw jelly is an old southern treat. Mayhaw. Uh, I don't know if that's what that is, but I don't even know what that is. Um, that word doesn't even mean anything to me. So you did send a couple other things. There's a pecan log. Ooh, or do you say pecan log? This is from the, the Punta Clara kitchen at Miss Colleen's house. So that's why. That looks really good. And this looks like uh, probably the Mayha jelly. Interesting. Uh, and then also maple bacon cashews. Wow, that's something that I can have, uh, I think, even though, um, you know, I'm, I'm avoiding actual maple bacon at this point. Uh, the maple bacon cashews could really hit the spot. I'm excited about that. Uh, let's just get the knife so that I can look at this jelly. There it is. Okay. You guys weren't going to tell me that's where it was, were you? Uh, let's see here. Mayha jelly. Ingredients, Mayha juice, sugar, and pack. I've never heard of a Mayha. I don't know what the heck that is. It's, I've got no idea. I am going to have to look that up. Uh, it does look like the, you did send one thing that would melt a little bit, but I bet if I put it in the fridge, it'll firm right up. It's still mostly solid. So that's great. Uh, I do love jellies and jams. It's stuff that I don't really get to eat too much of these days, especially if I haven't worked out in a week. Um, but uh, I'm excited to try that and also to figure out what a mayha is. Uh, that must just be like a Southern colloquialism for something that I'm familiar with, right? I guess after mailbag, I will take a look. Uh, thank you so much for sending the snacks though. I'm excited about all of them. There we go. I'll set those right back here. And we will uh, keep rolling. This is some wonderful stuff. Thank you for sending it. I know that cashmere's stuff is really going to be appreciated. And uh, that little carrot is something that she crank, could probably play with right now. But uh, she's doing okay with her mice. So we'll, we'll have her wait a little bit until she's recovered, I think. Uh, or just send it home with her endowments, as you do. We'll find out. In theory, if her surgery goes off well and she recovers, she could be adopted as soon as, you know, the week after. That seems like, that seems highly unlikely because it's just not soon enough to know, I think, that she's doing well. But, uh, you know, in theory, it, it may not be that much longer until her adoption. So we'll see. She is probably always going to be extra tiny for a cat. She's, she did, really doesn't seem like she's big enough to be going in for her spay, but she is three months old now. So, all right, endowments, fun tubes, one pack each to crack it, crack and gadget, no, crank, all right. Uh, so that's the fun tubes right here, one pack each to crank and gadget. Thank you for all the hours of entertainment you've provided me. I wish you happiness and good health with your new people from Laura Kitten Fan. That's sweet. Uh, there's other stuff in here, though. Endowments, mice, one set each for crank and gadget. Okay, that must be these mice. Look at all of these. Uh, this is the kind that have the little string tail on them, which, by the way, is that's what uh, Gadget, I mean, Crank and I have been playing with up there in her room. I just dangle a little mouse in front of her, and she plays and plays and plays. Loves to play. Uh, thank you for all the hours of entertainment you provided me. Aw, oh, that's so sweet. Okay, um, there may be other notes, though, because we also have endowment. I know what this one would say. It would say endowments springs. So that's, I'll just say it for you. <laughs> um, uh, let's see here. Uh, where are the rest of the notes, though? Hi, do you have to get in the box, or maybe you could wait a little bit on that? Okay, you're going to play with those mice whether they're open or not. I get it. Okay, here we go. Here's the rest of the notes. 
Okay, endowments. Ooh, it's this little rope. One pack each to crank and gadget. Oh, I see there are two packs here. I thought there was only one. And it's just a long piece of rope that's frayed on either end so that it's got a little something for them to chew on. I haven't seen that before. Oh, and it's a whole pack of three. I haven't, maybe I'll pull one out right now. Uh, I see they're all, oh, oh, look at that. Those are really cool colors. And uh, oh, they've, uh, all right, these are gonna be a huge hit because they each have a little silver vine nugget attached to one end. That is going to be great. Uh, we're not gonna put one of those out right now. She's got plenty, she's got a silver vine thing right there, so she'll be fine. She wants to play with everything. If I put out everything that she wanted to play with, uh, she would uh, just be overwhelmed and none of it would probably get played with. Okay, and Endowment Springs. Yes, just like it said, I wish you happiness and good health with your new people from Laura Kitten Fan. Uh, oh, there's gotta be one more, right? Hang on. One box of cat pillows each to crank and gadget. I think these might be the ones then that she really likes to play with. Let's just take a look real quick. Oh yeah. This was her favorite kicker for a while up in the bedroom and I think she still likes it quite a bit. So this will be perfect for her. And someday Crank will be big enough to want to play with it too. Perfect, what a great set of endowments. Uh, Laura Kitten fan, that is some fantastic stuff for little Gadget and Crank. I appreciate it and I know they will. Okay, uh, let's keep rolling. I recognize this packing job as being from Ms. Charlie. So let's see here. Normally she gives me a little cutting guide, but now I just get to hack at it however I want. So, oh, there we go. Okay, I could have guessed that anyway. What are you trying to get into there? Oh, she wants to pull out one of those fuzzy cat hip toys. I don't think she knows what she's trying to pull out. She just wants to get in the boxes and pull stuff out. Oh, what's all this? There's a note, there's a knife guard. Hello, Mr. A and Dr. DJ. I hope your mom is recovering and please send our best wishes from all the KA community. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I, she is. Um, I've talked to her. She's you know, been in for her uh, or first orthopedic consult and uh, uh, I think they had to reset something, um, but they gave her very good pain medication. And then I think she has to go in for a second one like this week. Uh, I, I do need to follow up with her. It's been, I've been so distracted the last few days. I haven't kept up with that. Um, Enclosed as usual stuff, crocheted name rings for Hazelnut and her absolutely beautiful hats. Okay, let's take a look at those real quick. Uh, Hazelnut has this beautiful red one that says, of course, Hazelnut. And you've also included a little uh, like door spring toy, like the one that's in her room, I think. And a little cat shaped uh, coaster. Those are so cute. <laughs> They're also very funny. Uh, here's one for Bonnet that sort of matches Mom's. Uh, one for Fez that is uh, the yellow coaster, but the blue on his little tiny Fez name ring. Um, -doo -doo. Stetson gets another. Um, this one, his is blue with a teal sort of kitten thing. And then Derby gets a beautiful blue as well. Those are very cute. Now you also sent Biscuits to Share. Munch Mallow with real white chocolate. These look like a white chocolate version of um, the pinwheels. Have you guys ever, that's the American version. Uh, I can't, I forget what they call pinwheels overseas. Um, but that also looks like it's got some strawberry jelly in it, which is something a, a pinwheel does not have. It's just marshmallow and chocolate. Oh, there they are right there. The, the um, oh, what are they called though? I don't think they're called munchiest mallows. Uh, uh, man, it's going to come to me later and I'm going to feel so dumb. I was just looking to see if it used the word on here anywhere, but it does not. So there we go. Anyway, those look really yummy. And then Happy Faces Jam and Cream I see made with raspberries. Ooh, that sounds really good too. I think DJ will get into those. Okay, uh, biscuits to share. Pop tubes, That's uh, we got some of these last time. There's one of them around here that she was really having a ball with. So you sent a whole pack of them for her endowments. That's really cute. Uh, more large fun tubes for deployments and endowments. Yeah, these are extra large fun tubes. They're a lot bigger than the regular ones. Let's, uh, let's pick a red one out for these guys. Uh, let's see, you sent a teaspoon. I see that. It says, oh, no, not another teaspoon. I can see that we're going to have to, you know, my mom had a spoon collection. That was, that's a thing that people do, or collect little teaspoons. And 
Um, she never really added to it after a certain point. I don't know if it just, you know, kind of, but it was always hanging on our kitchen wall even after she stopped sort of collecting them. And it was like a whole set of teaspoons and little, each one had its little hanger that it would hang in there and they were all kinds of different uh, arty designs. It was really cute. It looks like we're just starting one of those ourselves whether we wanted to or not. Uh, so that's cute. Okay, uh, let's see here. So, oh no, not another teaspoon. Uh, that's all right. So let's take a look at this teaspoon. Oh, I'm gonna have to use a knife on it. Uh, there it is, okay. I should have a place where I set the knife every time, you know, like in front or to the side of me so that I always know where it is. That just makes too much sense, doesn't it? It does, it does make too much sense. Okay. Oh, this is cool. I like this one because it's got a little hook on the end um, and then it's got a really cute smiley cat face on it too. The hook is, I mean, it's like, it's his tail, of course, so you can see his head at the top and his tail at the bottom, but uh, that's appealing for some reason. I don't know what you could practically use it for, um, the tail end, I mean, but it's cute, it's a cute little design on it. Very cool. Um, that is adorable. We'll add it to our newly uh, started teaspoon collection, apparently. Just a reminder that ginger cats need extra potty training. Okay, well, you just labeled this as black box. So I guess we'll have to look inside to figure out what the reminder is that orange cats need extra potty training. I'll tell you, our little kid sure does. Uh, that's the reason that we moved that up. And I guess, wow, Loganberry, Teaspoon, and Crank are all the ones that we have with potty problems right now. And they're all the orange cats. Hmm, might be onto something there. This is an orange cat sitting on the toilet. It's a little ceramic orange cat sitting on a little ceramic toilet. It is really cute. He's just chilling there. Uh, I don't know how well he can see that. Oh, we can do close-ups now during mailbag. Why don't I show it to you close? Hang on here. This shouldn't break anything. Let me just double check to make sure it's not gonna take over the sound. Okay, good. There we go. Now you should be able to see that little guy just fine. Isn't that cute? A little orange kitty on a little tiny toilet. That's, that's silly. Oh, somebody's decided to play with the packing that that was in. That's just some fluff that is here to hold this guy. You don't need to play with every single thing, do you? I mean, she does. Why am I asking that? She clearly does. Okay, we'll set him right back in his little cloud of uh, poop smells. And... I'm going to close this up so DJ can see it later and have the same experience. Okay, uh, so teaspoon, black box, stickers. Yes, you probably saw this. Uh, our, ooh, stickers. These are all cat stickers, too. Okay, good job. Uh, they're very pretty, too. These little patterns, and they're all sparkly. That's perfect to add to my sticker collection. Okay, now all I need is a trapper keeper. Uh, <laughs> Take care, Charlie. Person meows from Weirdo and Kevin. Sorry, there's no. Uh, sorry, no. There's more C in box. Maybe next time. Oh, why do you need more though? This is perfect. You just didn't write. There's more. You could have done it for any of the things in here. It's perfect. Okay, this I'm gonna put in my pocket so she doesn't steal it and try to eat it. Uh, and because I'm not gonna be able to get it back around the box in any sort of reasonable time frame. Okay, so let's put that over here. And uh, Charlie, thank you again very very much. We will keep rolling. Um, this should go for endowments, so I'm just going to see if we can just get that out of the way over here for a minute. Okay. All right. Well, um, hmm. the label on this looks familiar, but it can't be the thing I'm thinking of, so let's take a look. The thing I'm thinking of is this one. They both just have a plain white label. I guess that it's not too distinctive after all, is it? Okay, another knife guard. Wow, everybody, nobody trusts me with a knife. It's fine, it's fine. No, I wouldn't trust me with a knife either. What is this all about? Address label removers. Oh, interesting. Have to roll over the label several times. Oh, I see, it's like a big ink roller to cover over labels. The pink and white label remover makes the address label disappear. Rub good once, let it dry a little, rub it again, let it dry. The part shaped like a cat paw is actually a box cutter. Whoa. Uh, ooh, the pink 
And white item also came with an extra cartridge. The yellow item works the best. Okay, well, we'll figure all that out. But you sent two different kinds of ink rollers to cover over the addresses. That's fun. Dear Mr. A and Dr. DJ, first, thank you for everything you and Dr. DJ do to help our furry friends. I found your channel at the beginning of the lockdown, and I believe Kitten Academy kept me from losing it. The walls were closing in. Watching those beautiful cats and kittens gave me something to look forward to from day to day. I believe I began to watch the channel around the Port Oranges class and the Cattern class. It's hard for me to choose, but I believe the Catterns were my favorite class. Paisley and Argyle were my favorites. That whole class was so cute. Also, the other kitten that stole my heart was Betsy. Loved her so much. I love all the faculty for different reasons. However, Ari reminds me of my cat, Chanel, because she is always ready to run and is afraid of every noise. Also, and she keeps her eyes big and wide like Ari. One day, can you please tell us the faculty ages? Is Logan the most chill cat on the faculty? So first off, I think Ari is actually our most chill cat. He's the one that is just never starting trouble with anybody. He does hiss at little kittens at first, but then he comes around to all of them if they stay long enough. So uh, he's the one that I think of as just never causing any trouble. Um, but Loganberry probably comes in second. Uh, Loganberry does, um, you know, act up once in a while, especially when he's hungry. He has food issues. So every morning at breakfast, while he's really hungry and all the faculty's waiting together, he tends to start fights with all, everybody else. Uh, he'll like smack Maggie and he'll smack Eddie and he's just, he's just a very rude boy when he's hungry. Um, can I tell you the faculty ages? I can't because I never know what they, what is time? I thought Eddie's, Eddie just had his birthday and I thought he was 10, but he's 13. Where does the time go? Uh, I think we got him the first year that DJ and I were married too. And I thought we'd only been married for a decade. So, uh, it's just, man, time flies. It really does. It goes faster and faster. The older you get like a, like a ball rolling downhill and picking up momentum. Uh, I guess that's why they say over the hill, huh? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, I probably couldn't even put them in order by age these days. Uh, I do know Eddie's our oldest, of course. He's 13. Um, I think Loganberry would be next, and then Ari, uh, and then Maggie, and um, I think that's right. But I don't know for sure. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't actually uh, know all that well. Uh, hope you can use the grocery bag holders. Just fill the holders with your grocery bags after shopping trips. I make them by hand, and they're very handy for storage. I have one in the kitchen, garage, and my car. My friends and family members all request me to make these holders in their desired fabric choice. Lastly, the other items are ink erasers for blacking out address labels on packages. I tested them, and they seem to work. Give it a try. Take care of yourself. Dr. DJ and those wonderful kittens and cats, we appreciate you both. Uh, this is from Shanette, and Shanette is a Kitten Academy Patreon member and predominantly inactive Discord member. Well, thank you so much. Uh, that's wonderful. And look, you sent pictures of Chanel. I see the big eyes that you're talking about. That's a, he's so, she's so pretty with, um, she's like a long haired tuxy girl with a little white triangle and a little white mustache. That is a very good looking kitty. There you go. Okay. So, uh, you sent, like you said, Ooh, bag holders. And you've also, I think, um, oh, you've got paper in here so we can see. All right. These are great. Uh, you hang them up by this little elastic thing. You stick your plastic bags in here and you can just dispense them one at a time out the bottom with a little elastic rings on them. And it's got a little cat theme going on. Uh, there's two of them here. That's very useful. Uh, most places here don't do plastic bags anymore, but we still have a gigantic stash, um, which I've kept from when they were uh, starting to get rid of them because uh, we we use so many. They're very useful for things, aren't they? It seems weird that, um, you know, people are getting rid of those. I guess I don't really know what is a big environmental impact and what isn't. Uh, so I'll have to take everybody's word for it. But it is something that is easy to reuse at least a few times. So, all right, the ink erasers. Look at this. So this is, I can see, ooh, that's a nice little box cutter in the one end. And it came with a refill. And then this is the eraser end. Oh, look at that. So uh, that's so cute. It's a little cat paw. 
I especially like the detail that the, the little thing that you push up to open the blade is uh, also shaped like a little paw bean, little paw pad, I guess. That is so cute. Well, this is the perfect tool for mailbag. I'm going to put it in our mailbag utility box. There we go. And uh, you sent another kind for us to try out, too. This is the yellow one. This one looks more like a tool. It says confidential. I see. Uh, oh, it actually has the word confidential on it. So when you roll it, it just prints. <gasps> That's so cool just all by itself. It just prints confidential um, in big letters and little letters all over something. So you can roll over it a few times, like you say, to cover something up completely. But I think it's just fun to be like confidential. And I bet a lot of, wow, that's some nice ink too. I bet in a lot of cases that would be enough to obscure the address enough for uh, the live stream. I mean, we just have to make sure that it's not immediately legible. So uh, even though you say to go over it many times so that it's completely illegible, uh, I like the idea of just seeing, no, oh, I see, that didn't hold up so well there. Oh, see, it's darker on this, not so well on the plastic. That's okay, we wouldn't be using it on plastic anyway. I bet that would make that pretty difficult to read on the camera, except for that spot that I left a little white there. Okay, very cool. Uh, I like that, it says confidential. I have to put that on all my confidential stuff. Okay, uh, thank you so much. That's some fun stuff. It's so nice to hear from somebody. I always love it, like I, I've said this a million times, when we hear from somebody who's been watching for a while but writing for the first time, Long time listener, first time caller, I guess, uh, is uh, something that people would say if we were a radio show. Um, but, uh, but I always like that. It's nice to know that there's still people out there that we haven't met, but that know us. Uh, that's a fun one. Okay, so thank you so much. I'm excited to try these out next time instead of using the, the tapes, the various types of tape that I use. Uh, that should be a fun one. So this, I think I gave away as I was using the roller on it. Uh, this is from Sage's Handmade, and it's addressed to Hazel. And, of course, Sage's Handmade is the Etsy store, Sage's Handmade. And it's got to be a kick bunny for Hazel. The note says, ooh, these are some nice colors. Dear Mr. A and Dr. DJ, I hope you're both doing well. It was 106 degrees here yesterday, and, I, and yet I saw you on the stream opening windows and saying how cool it was outside. Yeah, it was, we had a, some, a very cool few days last week. Yesterday, by the way, I had to spend hours and hours waiting at the uh, emergency doctor for a little crank, and I spent it all sitting in the car with the windows down. It was perfect. It was so perfect. It couldn't have picked a better time to have to do that. Uh, I hope you and DJ can get out and enjoy your lovely weather before it gets super cold out. Yeah, well, okay, let's not do it the way I enjoyed it yesterday, though. Uh, I'm enclosing the kick bunny for Ms. Hazelnut. This time in a purple as pretty as she is. Like last time, this one is filled with a mix of Yao and Frontier Co-op organic catnips. Of the two, I'm finding Frontier Co-op to be even stronger than Yao. Though I'd love to hear from anyone who has experience comparing the two. It must be strong. She wants to get right in there and find it, even though it's all over here now. The pattern for the kick bunny in my Etsy shop, sageshandmade.etsy.com. No spaces, no apostrophe where you can currently find pre-made kick bunnies, or you can message me to commission one for you. I just got in a ton of new yarn, so the sky's the limit with regard to color combinations. I do like this royal purple. It's very nice. Don't You don't get to break in another mom cat's toys. No, no, no. You don't get to do that. No, we're going to make one rule, okay? There you go. That's her toy. You let her have fun opening it. Um... Thanks, as always, for all you do for kittens, cats, and the KA community. I really appreciate all the work you've been putting into the back end, and I'm excited about the new camera controls. All your effort shows, and it's awesome. Kitten Academy really is the best place on the internet. Take care of yourselves with much love. Sage. Sage, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, your story is Sage's Handmade, S-A-G-E-S, -E Handmade, like made by hand. Uh, not like the Atwood story. I say that every time, um, but, uh, you know, why not? There's always new listeners uh, and first-time callers. Um, thank you so much. These are really wonderful. The mom cats do mostly all love them. Uh, it's rare that a mom cat's like, that's not really the toy for me. So I think it's a, it's a great thing, and uh, that is a perfect, perfect color for, for sweet old Hazel, uh, just like you say. 
Uh, she has one that, that she plays with, and I don't, I don't know where it is. It's got to be over there by that tower. Oh, it is. It's right over there by the food dishes, her beautiful yellow one. So how fun. She's getting in the rocket. Her eyes are so big in there right now, looking at me, sitting in the rocket. She is such a silly cat. Uh, okay, let's keep going. What, how much time we've been here? It's been about an hour. Okay, I was wondering, my back is starting to feel it a little bit, but I think we can try to keep going here. I don't want to put it to two days unless I really have to. Uh, this is cute. Pussums Cat Company. This must be Dr. Pussums. Uh, these toys are as you see fit, intended for both faculty and foster use. Enjoy from Laura. Laura, thank you so much. Uh, as you see fit. Okay. So these are from Dr. Pussum's Catnip. Uh, I was, I've said before, he makes a very good catnip and is sort of a localish company, uh, New England, I think. Uh, I don't see the address on here, so I can't swear to that. But here we have a bunch of felted little catnip balls and a tiny little mouse. It's a little smaller than the usual one. Very cute. Uh, Dr. Pussum's Catnip in the past, I, I know we've had some kickers that were sent that were made with that catnip and... Uh, uh, I had noticed that the faculty seems to play with them for longer, they, they seem to last longer as an object of attention than the Yao does. So, you know, it's not like Yao is the best catnip maybe, but it's certainly, uh, it's a great catnip that is able to, you know, you can find it a lot of places and that's good too. Of course, the Yao is always a hit, those bananas, every time, I've never seen it fail. So this is full of Dr. Pussum's little toys of various types. Oh, look at that. There's a Day of the Dead pattern here on this little pillow. I like that. Very cool. Uh, there's also some animal print ones. Oh, several types of animal prints. We have a plain brown one and a plaid one and uh, this winking kitty. And it's it's really good catnip. We should pick one to give to her. Here, this matches your room. Why don't you... Okay, but... Or you could just tear the bag open and knock all the balls out. Why don't you do that? Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> Uh, that's fun. The faculty will like some of these too. This is a lot of stuff. There's still more in here too. Here, we'll leave one out because otherwise I can't get this thing closed. There we go. Oh, oh, wild. Oh, look at that butt wiggle. She's going to get it. Okay. All right, close that up. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. There's some loose catnip in here too. Another little mouse hiding. Oh, I see. This is from the, the bag of mice that opened up. Three fluffy fur mice. So they are. There we go. We'll put that all back together. Close that one up. Uh, oh, there's some kind of wand in here, I think, too. Look at all that loose catnip. We'll just shake that out for you to enjoy. Two kinds of... Oh, these are nice. It's just a stick. Uh, and I see the way that they've made this. It's a stick with a feather, and they're attached together with a little piece of shrink tubing, like the kind that you would use to cover up a, an electrical connection. In fact, it says 10AWG on it. Uh, so that's, uh, that is literally shrink wrap, uh, shrink tubing for electrical stuff. That's a clever way to put these together. Uh, I guess they must have used some kind of plug of glue to keep the feather in the other end. Uh, it's well made. These are great. And feathers on a stick, this is going to be a big hit with everybody. There's no question of it. So this is good stuff. Uh, thank you so much. Dr. Pussums is, is uh, I'm all covered in catnip now because it was open a little bit in there. Uh, that's all really good stuff. Okay. Let's see here. I'm going to put this over here in the discard bin for now. These will be great. I'll give a couple of those to the faculty right away, and then uh, the rest of them I think we'll put downstairs for either future use or endowments, as we do. So, Laura, thank you very much. All right. To Callie's mom uh, for Gadget. So this is for Gadget from Callie's mom. Because Chewy doesn't let you leave a note, you put your name and the, the address. Uh, so that's perfect. Callie's mom. Oh, look at this. This is all kind of slow feeders and play feeders. That's a good idea for her. In fact, I just was online talking to somebody about the slow feeder. Uh, this They asked about the, the, the spaceship slow feeder. I thought uh, it's a little bit better for treats than it is for straight up feeding. It's not, it's not the best choice when it comes to food, um, but I really like the ceramic one. So I was suggesting the ceramic one. And when I went to um, Amazon to find a link so I could share it, 
I found that there's another very similar ceramic one that's more angular and uh, comes in black. So I ordered one of those in black just for fun. And uh, I also saw a plastic one that looked like a similar concept, um, but uh, it looked like fun too. So I ordered one of those. They, I think they might even turn up today. Uh, we'll see. This one is, it looks like a little mouse that has a tiny switch on top that you can open to get uh, things to, to fall out. Let's take a look. Now adjustable for every age cat. Okay, oh, the box has a Velcro lid. Look at that, it opens right up. Huh, this is more complicated than I thought. There's a food scoop to measure with. There's three little mice that do have some sort of a little switch that you can control the size of the opening with. Um, once your cat has to hang on the trainer, okay, uh, put your favorite treat in the trainer at bedtime, remove the food bowl overnight so your cat can use the trainer in private. Once your cat has the hang of the trainer, use the four portion filler to put one scoop in each of the three mice. Start with the dispenser wide open as your cat learns adjust the opening to increase the challenge. I see. That is really cute. So you can see what they look like right there. I think that would be a fun one for them. Hide the mice. Oh, hide the mice and let your cat hunt for its food. How fun. Um, why bowl free? How you feed your cat is just as important as what you feed your cat. Cats need to hunt. I guess that's cool. I mean, I like to scatter their food all over. I think it's a little more fun for them, but hunting for it in a mouse has got to be even better than that, right? Uh, here is one that looks like a strawberry. How crazy appropriate. Um, it's got little black pips and a red thing. It also looks like the roof of a house, but I guess that's just the shape. Um, oh, it's a melon. It's a watermelon. Of course it's a watermelon. Uh-huh. Because it's got the green also. That puts it all together. Melon madness, puzzle and play. Um, so each of these is a little container you put treats in, and then they have to move the, the seed out of the way to get access to it. Um, there's also pegs you can put the treats in to make it even more difficult. Hmm. Uh, that looks really cool. Oh, let's see. There we go. Well, that's what it looks like in person. Uh, so you can see, you can put the treat either just in the little dish like this. They have to push this out of the way to figure it out. Or um, you, can, you can put this, I guess, over the dish part. And I'm not sure how that works if you're going to... I guess um, you'd have to have the pips out of the way to do it. Uh, anyway, it's very cool. Hmm. Uh, it looks like it's just fun to play with for them, I bet. It's got some good weight to it too, so they can, and the stuff slides really easily. So some of these would seem like they would be difficult to manipulate, but this one, uh, the parts all move very easily and it's heavy, so they're not gonna be pushing the whole thing around. Uh, that's a good design, I like it. Uh, we'll see. We'll have to try some of this stuff out on her. She can actually be our little toy tester. There's also Buggin' Out. Uh, this is the exact same idea, but it's also all flat, so it's not going to be quite as easy for her. And this one is a leaf with um, little ladybugs on it. That's really cute. And then finally, this is the same kind of design again, except this one is a cloud with rain and it's got one big uh, treat zone that has a extra tricky um, I see you've got to move something out of the way and then oh I see these are difficulty levels listed on them this one says le uh, difficulty level two this one is gonna say difficulty level two okay so these are both level two but this one's got a little something extra on it that makes it level three let's take a look and see if I can figure it out Oh, if I can even get it out. Wow, I'm failing at level three. There we go. Get good. Um, I see. So the the new quirk here is some of these are going to be far more complicated with the little... Um, I like the fact that these are transparent so they can see the treats through them as well as probably smell them and play with them. But they have to push these out of the way. And then there's the little treat cup there. Um, this could also slide around a little, so we'll see. That's, uh, that's fun. But then up here, we've got one that they have to unlock and then turn to expose various different treat cups. That's also tricky, and maybe you don't even fill all of them, so they've got to really figure it out. That is fun. I see you could also lock it with this one if you wanted to lock it that way. Oh, you can really switch things up for them. You want to play with it right now, don't you? You just want to play with it as a toy. Even if there's no treats involved, you're like, oh, that looks like fun. Uh, okay, how does this fit in here? Not that way, I'll tell you that. 
we'll pretend that fits even though it's not exactly right. These are really cool. Um, this is a lot different than the sort of slow feeders that I got, of course. These are ones that she's actually got to play with and interact with. And she is the kind of curious cat that I think would really benefit from something like this to keep her stimulated as well. What are you doing? She's sitting at the window now looking at me with her giant wide eyes like she can't come in even though the door is wide open. Okay, you do you, kiddo. All right, let's keep going. These are really cool. Um, so um, thank you again. That's from Callie's mom. I think that we should definitely try those out on her. Okay, uh, we got a giant box here. This one did not actually come from Chewy. It's recycled. It's the best kind of recycle. Just using something twice. Uh, ooh, it's a bunch of Halloween stuff. Is it already that time of year? Must be coming up, huh? Um, I don't see... Oh, there's the note. Okay, hang on. Let's start there. Okay to read on stream. It's a, uh, let's see, the card has uh, some little kittens trick-or-treating. It's a little watercolor uh, and ink, I think. Um, really cute little kittens. One's dressed as a clown, one's dressed as a ghost. Uh, and it says, Happy Halloween, Mr. A and Dr. DJ. Is it ever too early for Halloween? Check stream. Nope. It's never too early. Enjoy some Halloween goodies. Love from KC. Uh, from Rachel and Matt, who is Art Vandalay on Discord, which is another great name. A uh, little Seinfeld reference there. Um, okay, this is Boutique. These are really cute. These are sort of normal cat toys. We've got Mylar balls. We've got a plastic ball. We've got a little catnip mouse and some catnip bags, but they're all super cool Halloween theme. The mouse is a witch, and she's even got this, like, mesh shawl that she's wearing. Uh, the bags are Eye of Newt and Spells and Incantations. And then the Mylar balls are just sort of uh, Halloween-y colors. Very cool. Show that to you over the giant box that I've put in between us. Uh, we've got a Halloween blanket. Oh, very nice. It's ghosts and, um, ghosts and bats and little Halloween pumpkins. And it's heavy uh, and it's knit and it's very nice. That is going to get a lot of use here on the beanbag chairs um, or on the beds. That's, uh, that's, that's heavy. That's, like I said, it's nice. It's good. I like it. Okay. This is way too cool. I've never seen this before. Um, this is a um, pet bed coffin. Lazy bones. How cute is that? Um, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, DJ was just noticing that we didn't just move up the consult for Crank. We moved her entire surgery up. Yeah, uh, they're happening on the same day. Look at that coffin. That's really cool. Uh, it's, it's, the shape is fun, and I love the fact that it's open here. Oh, it's even got Velcro. You could open it even more. Oh, wow. It needs to have, like, a creaking sound effect when you open it. How pretty is that, too? The red velvet in here. And the, the removable bottom, of course, because they'll have to clean this up quite a bit. That is cute. That's, that's too much fun. I like that. Okay. Uh, finally, there is one last thing in here. It is a Halloween Cutie Ghost Cardboard Cat House. Oh, well, I'm curious to know what it looks like, so let's just take a look, even if we're not going to put it up quite yet. Oh, well, it's just ghosts. It's a whole bunch of ghosts. Look at that. That should be fun. A big old house that's just covered in ghosts. I like the, the way that they're sort of painted, like they've got some real texture to them. That's fun. That's perfect for Halloween. These are fantastic. Thank you so much for sending them. Sorry that the, the one Halloween house that you were probably inspired by has already left the building. Uh, but we, we've got so much Halloween stuff stashed away in the basement, too. Uh, Halloween was something that I never really, you know, most holidays, except for Christmas, are ones that we never really did anything for. But... Over the years, we've collected quite a bit of Halloween stuff that folks have sent in, so we're ready. All right, uh, let's put that over there. Uh, that's almost all. Oh, we got the giant box, and we've got a B&B &B Sisters box. Of course, you recognize these. Uh, very distinctive. So let's do that. Oh, foot cramp. Okay, hang on. There we go. Okay.
Ooh, Ellsworth Rock Gardens. That looks really pretty. It says rock gardens, but there's a lot of plants in there too. Uh, there you go. And I think this might be the note. Oh, that's beautiful. This looks just like the blankets that you send. It's like a, like um, uh, an a sort of. I don't know how to describe it. I, I'm trying to figure out what uh, material that would be. It might just be digital paint. Because uh, it doesn't look quite like acrylic, but I guess it could be with a really clever style to it. Um, it says, Hello, Mr. A and Dr. DJ. We recently came back from a short vacation trip to Minnesota's Voyageurs National Park and also some state parks around Lake Superior. How fun would that be? Um, I, that, that seems like that would be a really good time. We thought of you and sent home some local papers that we found along the way. We've also included a postcard from the park. Uh, we've included the usual food, blankets, and toys. You will see we've sent some of the more, uh, some more of the dragon eggs you seem to like so much. Hopefully the kittens do too. In case anyone watching would like to order them, they can be found at Claw and Claymore on Etsy. Ah, uh, well see, I was curious. Claw and Claymore on Etsy. We just love the new kitten, especially, uh, new kittens, especially Stetson and Derby. Thank you for all you do. The B&B &B sisters, Beatrice and Bernadette. How oh, great. I just love uh, that you guys are out there traveling the world and sending me newspapers. Uh, we've got the Baron News Shield. Whoa. The Shitek Alert. I'm probably mispronouncing. Oh, wow. Um, what else? These look like a lot of fun. The Leader Telegram. Ooh. All right, where's this, the leader telegram from? Oh, oh, Claire, all right, yeah. Uh, Barron, Wisconsin, I don't know where that one is. And SheTech, I don't know where that is either, but I guess they're all up in that northern end by Minnesota, huh? Um, let's see, we've got the Minnesota Star Tribune. Look at that cover. That's a lot of ink for a big old green thing. Okie dokie. And, oh, wow, this is a deep stack of papers. I didn't think it went that far. The Cook County, uh-huh, um, Cook County, Minnesota, um, News Herald. I guess there's a lot of Cook Counties. The Duluth, yep, News Tribune. Boy, I miss the Midwest. Uh, very cool. Uh, what is this? The Pioneer Press, Minnesota State Fair. All right, I guess it's not, oh, TwinCities.com. All right, I guess that tells us where we're at. Um, the Masabi Tribune. Whoa, you got some real ones out there ones for us. Uh, Masabi Tribune, that'll be fun. And the Star Tribune again. I recognize now that's the, must, the green star must be their logo. Uh, very cool. All right, that's exciting. I am going to bring all of those up to my office. I've got a stack of them up there that I just pull out and read when I you know, need something fun to do. You did sense a couple more of the 3D printed eggs. They're so shiny. I know. Do you want one? I know. I don't remember where we put the other two. I think they just went for endowments. Or did we put one out? I don't know. But I do know the iridescent rainbow one is upstairs in the bedroom because I throw it around all the time. And I don't know if anybody's really playing with it except for me. <laughs> but, but that's okay, right? I'm playing with it. I count. I count. Uh, this is really a cute blanket. I love it. Oh, you sent another iridescent rainbow one here too. That's great. Okay. Oh, now someone wants to play with it. This I love. Oh my goodness. I've always loved this crazy sun uh, motif. And uh, this has got a couple of different kinds of suns and moons with uh, kittens on clouds and on uh, marble columns. Oh, this is beautiful. I, I really like this one. I think I'm going to have to steal this and add it to our personal collection. Um, because I like it. It's also, the, the artwork is um, easy to, I think, make out on the stream, too. Uh, the colors are great. And I do, I love that little sun and moon. The, I don't know what you call that particular style. But uh, I've always liked it. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I, I mean, I do know why. I just thought of uh, the album cover for that Tears for Fears album that... Uh, the seeds of love and the music video is all filled with this same imagery. Um, I guess that's, you know, why I thought of it. Where have I been? Oh, 80s. Okay, um, let's see. This is very cute, too. This is like a block print kitty faces, and it says meow. 
That's perfect for the stream as well. It's very cute, sort of a pinkish salmon-y color. Uh, another one here that kind of matches that same color pattern too, which is nice. DJ likes to kind of do that. So maybe that would work out pretty well for doing a room with a couple few blankets. Uh, this has sort of an iridescence to it as well. And it's some cat in a field of flowers, a classic. You guys uh, have a, a preference for that, I guess. It's good. I think they're very pretty. Okay. I know, I, I know it does smell like catnip, doesn't it? Okay. Now we've got some more fun stuff going on in here. We got to the toys layer. Um, we've got these catnip dragons. Wow. Uh, this, these have dragons like either painted on them or I guess it's the, the material that's been cut out that way. Very cool. And it feels like they're filled with catnip. That looks like a fun one. We have a, oh, this is really cool. It is a feline frenzy tuna baguette. It is a tuna sandwich and it's even wrapped up in a, here, I'm gonna take the wrapping off of this part so you can see. Uh, it's like wrapped up in a paper wrapper like you would get at a, at a sub shop. It's got, you can see the tomatoes and lettuce in there and it's fuzzy and it's a catnip kicker. You guys find the most unique cat toys Oh, look at that. You got a bomb to go with the egg. It's like a little rainbow bomb and it's got the, the uh, um, Triforce on it too. So this must be a, like a bomb that Link would throw uh, in the video games, but it's also rainbow iridescent 3D printed bomb. I, this is even cooler than the iridescent dragon egg. Oh, it's even cooler. There's the dragon egg, by the way. Speaking of video games, we have, uh, it says, yes, catnip on it. Um, this is the Game Boy. We do have one of these, I know, because it's been in the bedroom since you sent it. I look at it, I see it, still see it there. It, it hasn't been uh, tossed out yet. Most toys don't last quite that long around here, but I guess I must like that one quite a bit. A whole bag of Charlie balls. Those kids upstairs are ready for them. In fact, let me slip a couple in my pocket to throw in their room so they've got extra. There we go. They are ready for this. I'm just going to stick a few right back here. Oh, 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 there we go. I really like that bomb. Uh, that's so cool. Okay, we got an alien head. Uh, very cool stuff. A, uh, oh, we've got the fish that are the... Wow. Um, what do they call it? It's like sublimation printing or something where you, they've got the, like the real pattern. Oh, and they've got rattles in them. That's fun. A whole bunch of different kinds of fish in here. A minnow. I don't know. They're all minnows to me because they're all that size. And a goldfish down at the bottom. Okay. Here we've got a pirate, uh, like a, oh, it's Mar It's actually Margaritaville branded. A parrot and a pirate head. Uh, skull and bones, I mean. There we go. Um... Another Margaritaville. This is three little fuzzy mice, one with a lime and two with uh, sort of tropical prints on them. One's got pineapples and margaritas and one's just got a generic sort of tropical flowers on it. Um, uh, uh, hibiscus maybe something looks like. I don't know. Those are really pretty. And another one. Wow, Jimmy Buffett. Uh, we've got these mirror shades with a, a pineapple that says chill. <laughs> That's cool. All right. We have, ooh, a Puffy Crew spaceship and something. What's going on in here with it? I want to see what the rest of this is. Oh, I see. It's just a card that says Puffy Crew. Okay. And a spaceship. Oh, look at that. That's very like Flash Gordon. Ooh, oh, oh, look at those wings to keep it going. And the, the little strings are the rocket exhaust at the bottom. That's cool. All right, Puffy Crew. Let's put that back in there. Um, the little windows on it too are shiny. Shiny little spaceship windows. Okay, get that back in the bag. Oh, there's another Puffy Crew here. This one is, a, oh, the flying saucer. All right, they can chase each other around the room. Uh, I wanna see the flying saucer too. <laughs> it's so cool. Oh, wow, that's super shiny. The, the pod on the top is, uh, is very shiny. Uh, and he's got the little uh, rocket exhaust on the bottom, too. He can fly around like this. 
And uh, she's under the blanket with just her head, the rug. She's under the rug with just her head sticking out. You're too silly. Uh, she, she looks at me and then hides like I don't know where she is. <laughs> and her eyes are always so big. It's ridiculous. She's such a crazy cat. Boy, she just keeps you entertained all the time. It's the one cat show. All right, I get this back in here. That, that, wow, how did they even get that in there in the first place? Okay. That's got to be somebody's job and they got to be super frustrated. Okay. Here we have uh, an embroidered little parakeet, an embroidered little um, uh, elephant, a dolphin, uh, another parakeet, uh, some of the fish that we use out by the bears, the little upstream spawning salmon toys. I don't know if that's what they are, but that's what they are to us. A bag of animals that uh, we've got a... Um, Animals and flowers. Uh, we've got a duck, a flower, um, some weird pink. Oh, it's a rabbit, a little tiny bird, and oh, another kind of rabbit. Okay, very cute. Uh, we've got a cola and a cheese cat toys. Interesting combination there. Another one of the fish for the bear. A whole bag of those little tailed uh, string tail mice. Perritos spicy micey and you can tell it's spicy because the cat is crying. Oh, there's nutrition facts on the back of this one. There's nothing funny in the nutrition facts. Just the facts. All right. Well, fair enough, I guess. The front's funny enough for that. Perritos. We have furritos. Uh, this one is potato chips. Um, salt flavor. Okay. Yeah, no, I guess that makes sense. Oh, there is a vitamin fun on this one. See, now this one has fun on it. This one is just regular nutrition facts. Fat, cholesterol, sodium, carbohydrate, protein, etc., etc. This one, the nutrition facts, they took advantage. It says cheesy, 100% fluffy, 100% vitamin fun, 100% flavor, 0%, orange, 021C, uh, I don't know what that means, 25%. Based on a 20,000 calorie diet. Wow, okay. Uh, so that's burritos. We have lazy kitties. Uh, the little kitty is very lazy. Again, with the just perfectly normal nutrition facts on the back. And Cape Cat Kettle Cooked Fish Chip for original. Uh, this one also has the cheesy, fluffy, vitamin fun, etc. on the back. Best choice, it says. All right. Cape Cat. Uh, we've got this little gray cashmere uh, bear, actually. I thought it was a kitty, but it's a bear. I guess it can go either way. And then it looks like a bag stuffed full of little fur, um, little rattle mice with maybe feathers on them. Yes, feathers. Oh, those are the good ones. Little rattle mice with feathers. All right, we'll put one of those out right there. The kids upstairs could use a couple of these too. I'm gonna put those in my pocket with the other. Let's get a couple different colors out. I keep getting the orange one. Now maybe they're all orange. No, there's not all orange. There's a pink one right there. Okay, there we go. Put two of those in my pocket. And then finally, as always, you guys have stuffed the bottom of the box with the Nulo that we feed everybody right now. We got um, the kids uh, upstairs, Hazel's mom. We got her back on the Nulo after she had a whole bunch of the RC mom and baby cat uh, because uh, she's always had perfect poops on the um, Nulo, but the RC mom and baby cat finally got to her and she was having the RC mom and baby cat poops so uh, back on the, the new low, we're hoping that her poops go back to the, the, the new, uh, the way they were. So I think they will. Uh, just a matter of uh, time. So there we go. Uh, this bomb I got to keep out. I got I to gotta hang on to this thing. It's too cute. The little Triforce really makes it. If it was just a rainbow bomb, it would be cool. But for some reason, having that little triangle thing on there, it spins. Ooh, okay. I don't know why I'm having so much fun with that. Uh, I'm going to put that here so I can give it to one of the kittens. That might be a fun thing to dangle at little cranks since she's just a, a dangler right now. Crank dangler. Okay. There's one more giant box. I know we're all curious to know what's in there. So um, let me, I just, you know, this is a giant mess, but we'll just get to the big box and then I'll clean everything up. Okay. Sit over there. Okay. There we go. Oh, all the snacks. Okay, up and at them. 
Well, let's see. What is it? It's a giant box. All right. And the address says it's from Terror Bear. Uh, so Terror Bear. Okay. It says, do not open with a knife. What am I supposed to do with all this tape then? What am I supposed to do? I'm going to use a knife anyway. I'm a rule breaker. Look at me. I do what I want. Ooh. It's big. Oh, it's a, it's a, like the elephant and the, uh, the elephant and the dinosaur, which by the way, the elephant and the dinosaur both are waiting in the garage to be cleaned. Uh, the dinosaur it smelled just a little bit poopy and not too bad. I think maybe, um, maybe teaspoon accidentally got something in or on it. Uh, and the, the elephant seems like it got actually targeted by somebody. So they both need thorough cleanings, but they're just a little too nice to toss out. And so they're just, they're waiting to be clean. That's where they are. In the meantime, we might be able to put this guy out. He goes right with the others. Oh, look at that. It's a giant hippopotamus. Ah, oh, Custer's going to think we're making fun of him. Uh, this is so cute. I love the little nostrils on it too. And his little tiny eyes. Uh, the legs are in there. They have to be attached. That is so cool. These beds are so cool. The cats do like them too. Uh, you know, they don't always spend a lot of time in them, but they look nice and you can sit on them too. I mean, they're made for people to sit on. They're made to be like a usable little ottoman or stool. And they are, and they're wonderful that way. Uh, let's see. Oh, he's got little stubby feet. It's really cute. <laughs> Okay, we can put these on right now. You know, I don't know if it really fits any of the themes that we've got going on out there, but since there's nobody else out there right now, I could go ahead and put it in the living room, or I could put it anywhere else. All you do is screw on the legs and you're done. Very easy assembly. There we go. Okay. Oh, and it comes with little rubber pads to put on the bottom. Oh, I see. I'm, you know what I missed, though? It also comes with these gaskets to help hold the legs. Okay. Oh, we'll put one on there. That's fine. And then it's got little uh, felt pads to put on the bottom of the legs too, so they don't scratch up your floor. Oh yeah, that's a better. That really tightens in there with that gasket. Okay. There we go. I don't know why I'm putting this out right now, but you know, that room's a little bare at the moment, so why not? Oh, I said it's a little bare. That's all that's in there. A little bare. Huh. I didn't even do that on purpose. Okay. Uh, well, that was pretty much mailbag then, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. I am going to put this stuff away. I'm going to go check on Crank. And uh, if I can, I'll, I'll put her on the like a little micro close-up for you guys so you get a chance to see her. Um, <clears throat> and then... Uh, after I check on Crank, I think I really owe, I didn't get to spend any time yesterday hanging out with Hazel and her kids because uh, I spent the whole day hanging out in the parking lot of the emergency bed. So uh, I probably should have to spend a little time with her if I can. We'll see how long it takes me to get all the chores and stuff done here. I'm also way behind on that. And I've already told myself that I'm not going to worry about working out today, but tomorrow is going to be that for sure. Now, why am I getting messaged again? Did I do something wrong? Oh, no, I didn't. I'm getting a message uh, about uh, for an automated message about taking cats to the vet for their regular checkups. So that's useful. It is useful. It's not sarcasm. I'm going to put the little felt pads on and everything. Make this official. I'll have to apologize to Custard when he sees it, though. He's going to be like, all right, now I know this is about me. You already made the elephant joke. Now you've gone to hippopotamus? That's like next level. Poor guy. There we go. Do you want to play with this first? Do you want me to put it in here for a minute or two? We can do that before I move it out. Here. You can have first go, all right? Since you love to play with everything. Here, it'll eat a strawberry. Do hippopotamuses eat strawberries? I bet they do, if they get them. Not a lot of hippopotamuses roaming through the strawberry fields. At least not around here. 
I don't know, maybe there are. I don't spend a lot of time out there farming strawberries. There could be. Who am I to judge? Okay, let's get this stuff packed up to go downstairs. Some sort of order here. I think pretty much all of this goes downstairs. It's just the stuff in that pile over there that doesn't. So, also, um, I wanted a regular marshmallow bed for our patient upstairs. And I forgot there's one right here that she can have that she's already used to. So I'll bring that upstairs for her in a few minutes. Okay, I'm going to turn off my mic before I forget. I've rambled enough. You guys have had to listen to me for plenty long enough. Hang on now. There we go. That should put us back on the regular microphone. And I can turn the sound back on upstairs too, I guess. I see the admins turned it off probably because the kittens were being too noisy trying to talk over me. I'm more important than kittens. Uh, that's never been true. <laughs> it's fine. I just tell myself that sometimes. It's okay. Uh, let's see here. What are we gonna do? This can be an excellent box to put all this extra stuff in. Packing material. Knife guards, this stuff. Oh man, we really need to vacuum in here. I'm days late on that too. A lot going on for me to catch up on now. I guess that means I gotta eat them. I don't know if they're broken. I just said that. It's my excuse. some of this. You know, just a tiny bit more here. Oh, I really 
should get the vacuum out today. But if not, tomorrow morning, absolutely. All right, thanks again, everybody. That was a mailbag. It was a great mailbag. You guys are so generous to the kittens. I'm going to go take care of the rest of that now.